So we're going to talk about enteral feeding tubes um, and the most common types you'll see and the different names for them and sort of the mechanisms of how they work. So an enteral feeding tube basically refers to any feeding tube um, that's providing nutrition um, throughout the GI tract. So the person isn't swallowing, we're, we're putting it in either through a nasogastric tube or um, a G-tube or gastrostomy tube, uh, surgically placed or placed through endoscopy in the stomach. So we'll talk about some of the, the different types of um, gastrostomy or duogenostomy tubes today. So um, probably the most common type you'll see is this type that we have right now um, in Jake. So this is a balloon gastrostomy tube and sometimes um, places get a little bit comfortable calling it a G-tube or GT tube, which just is gastrostomy tube. Um, so you can kind of see what that looks like if it was in your patient. It sort of has this bolster at the bottom. Um, it has markings along the side. Um, it's got ports for feeding. Um, and this port isn't labeled, but you could either feed through it or put medications through it more often. And then it has a balloon port. So I'll show you sort of what that means. Um, the balloon port is this one with the yellow cap. And what that means is there is a balloon inflated with uh, sterile water. And you can imagine that sitting inside the person's stomach. Kind of helps hold the stomach up against the abdominal wall. Um, so that when we're feeding, we're feeding then directly into the stomach through a hole at the bottom of this tube. So you can just kind of envision what that looks like inside your patient. So again, that's a balloon gastrostomy tube or sometimes sort of known as a G tube or a GT tube. Um, before uh, that, G, that balloon gastrostomy tube is, is replaced, what they'll initially typically put in is what's called a PEG tube. So sometimes you will hear a GT tube sort of synonymously used with the word PEG tube. Um, PEG stands for percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy tube. And as you can probably imagine, that's more referring to how the tube is put in initially. So that's a procedure um, done by a physician typically under endoscopy. So a uh, camera that goes down the person's esophagus and helps them guide them to the stomach basically to insert this tube through a stoma um, that they make uh, in the stomach wall. So that's more what a peg looks like initially. So they put this one in. It doesn't have that balloon on the end. It sort of has a, a mushroom type bolster and a, another bolster at the top that sits over top of the person's skin. Eventually the peg tube is actually replaced with a balloon gastrostomy tube um, for more long-term um, feeding and medications, a uh, balloon gastrostomy tube is, is a lot more common. So um, once it's switched over, and that's a procedure again, the switch over from a peg to the balloon gastrostomy tube is done by a physician. But once the person has a balloon gastrostomy in place, um, it can be changed by specially trained nurses on certain units where that's uh, common. So they do change these tubes about every six months or if they notice that the, the tube is um, not, uh, has holes in it or tears or any sort of integrity issues, or they suspect or know that the balloon has ruptured or there's been a problem um, or it's come, uh, it's out of position. So they can change it uh, every six months at the least um, or as needed basically based on assessment. Um, and again, that's done by especially trained nurses on those on those units, um, but you may have an opportunity to see that done then. So then you kind of know the difference between the, the couple different types of tubes or some of the different types of tubes. So we use the word PEG and we're saying gastrostomy tube, meaning that tube is going into the stomach um, or the gastric space, if you will. You also may see tubes that are called PEJ tubes or duogenostomy tubes, which is referring to in the name, you can hear it, that it's going into the duogenum. So it's going into the small intestine. So it's going a little bit further past the stomach. Those duogenostomy tubes are not changed by nursing. Um, they are accessed and cared for by nursing, um, but we don't change those tubes. So just so you kind of know the difference and can kind of visualize what that tube looks like and where it's going and so on. So um, as I kind of mentioned, if you are using this tube, we'll go over some of the general principles of caring for this tube on your patient. We'll assume that now they've had their, their PEG tube replaced with a balloon gastrostomy tube um, when we've come on the ward. So a couple of things um, you want to note about your patient is the, the length, the external length of the tube. So um, they do have those helpful markers on them. 
though in this case the, the markers might be kind of rubbed off um, over time because remember it can be in there for up to six months so they can rub off over time um, or it may just be sort of at an odd spot in the markings. So what you may need to do or check the client's chart is to measure, um, using a measuring tape, the external length. So typically from the bolster um, up to the top of the purple um, feeding port. And so this one is measured at nine inches, so we would want to verify with that with the information in the chart um, if the, the markings on the tube weren't helpful or super accurate. Um, the other thing that um, some places uh, dictate that you do um, is check the gastric pH and characteristics before accessing your, um, your tube for feedings or for medications. So you would do that by opening these ports, um, inserting your syringe, and then pulling out to check the, the gastric contents, which is typically a grassy green color, um, and it has a pH of about 1 to 4, 1 to 5, depending on the age of the, the client. Of course, you'd want to wear gloves to do that. We're just sort of demonstrating for now the, the different tube systems. So if you were checking the pH, you'd want to make sure you had pH strips with you, gloves, maybe a med cup to test it into, et cetera. Maybe a towel even by the patient so that you didn't um, get that on them. The other thing I just want to draw your attention to um, that we sort of showed with the demonstration of the balloon gastrostomy tube um, is there's this balloon port. So you can see it on both. You can see the balloon port inflate. Make sure that if you're accessing, giving meds, etc., to your patient, that you don't accidentally or inadvertently access the balloon port. Um, they've tried to make that really obvious by having these NFIT type um, ends, which are purple, just like our purple enteral syringe um, brands. So just make sure that you're being mindful not to put anything or um, remove anything from that balloon port. Um, so those are sort of the main principles of your um, gastrostomy tube, G-tube, um, sometimes again called a PEG tube. Um, one other thing that sort of applies across the board for um, these gastrostomy tubes, and you can probably imagine, is the site around it. So we call that the stoma site or the, um, the peritube skin here. You can probably imagine we want to be assessing that quite frequently. So um, you'd want to be checking it every time you're accessing the tube or if the tube is maybe dormant right now for some reason they're not needing it for anything we just still want to check on the skin around that site and general care for that skin is very similar to general hygiene of the patient's skin so we can use warm water and soap when cleaning it um, and the exception to that is when this is a new surgical incision for 48 to 72 hours that is considered a surgical wound after a new peg tube is inserted um, so but after that 48 to 72 hours, it's just left open to air and we want to keep it clean and dry. So in the morning or throughout the day, you're going to clean it with warm soap and water, dry it really well. Um, you want to actually check under the bolster to make sure the skin isn't irritated or reddened. Um, you want to make sure there's no pus, any signs of infection, any signs of tube dislodgement or displacement would be concerning um, and reasons to then notify your physician. We'd want to be documenting that too. Um, you don't want to stick anything under the bolster generally speaking. Um, you don't want to put dressings under there um, if it's a well-established stoma site. Um, and also once this site is mature, which is a, considered about four weeks after surgical incision, um, you also will rotate the tube 360 degrees at least once daily. Um, and again, you want to go uh, look at your site's policies and procedures on that, but um, just rotating the tube helps it not adhere to the, the wall there. Um, so not tugging, just gently rotating it. Um, maybe you do that when you're cleaning it again, um, and we're just monitoring that site, um, that skin around it, making sure there's no um, adverse reactions or signs of, of problems there every time we, we access it. So that's it for general principles of the tube, and we'll move on to feeding and medications now.